So far we've been finding the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. But what you might want is the slope of the tangent line at an arbitrary point. Just some point x. To do that, you use something called the derivative of f of x. The derivative of the function f at x is defined as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Notice this is exactly what we've been talking about all along here, except now instead of saying a inside the quotient, now we say x, and later on you can plug in anything you want there. So that's why it's at an arbitrary point. The notation for this is f with a little prime on it here. The prime that you see up there indicates that it's a function that describes the derivative, or it's a function that tells you the slope of the tangent line. So if I plugged a number into this function, it would tell me the slope of the tangent line at that number. If we can work this limit out, all we have to do is to find slope of tangent line, just plug numbers into that thing. What you should be starting to notice here is we talked about difference quotients. That was f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And now we've also talked about derivatives. Notice you see a difference in f's here divided by h, which is a difference between two points, kind of like the b minus a. But now when we do derivative, remember the points get closer and closer together. That's why we need the h approaching 0. When we're doing difference quotients and average rates of change, it's just two arbitrary points. They could be close together or they could not be close together. But the difference quotient, you'll see that described when we talk about the slope of a secant line, the average rate of change, or the average velocity. They all mean the same thing. It's just it's a, in a different context. When we talk about the slope of the secant line, we're talking about the slope through two points on a particular graph. Average rate of change, we want to know how fast something's happening. Average velocity is when you're in a vehicle or your position's changing, then you want to know how fast you're going. Now in a derivative, the corresponding thing would be slope of a tangent line. So now we're wanting to know the slope of that line that grazes a function, or the instantaneous rate of change, or the instantaneous velocity. So the contexts here kind of correspond. The difference is, is when you talk about the things on the right, you're always talking about things being very close together. And that's why that term instantaneous comes in. Let's go ahead and find the derivative of the function f of x equals x squared plus 2x. We're going to start from our definition of a derivative that we just had in the blue box. So the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. We're going to work out the pieces here in the difference in the quotient and then take the limit. So let's start by finding f of x plus h. That means in our function we have to change all the x's here and here to x plus h. The x squared becomes x plus h quantity squared. 2 times x becomes 2 times the quantity x plus h. We'll go ahead and FOIL out x plus h times x plus h. That gives us x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And let's, let's write that out because sometimes people have a little bit of trouble with that. x times x gives us the x squared. The inside is h times x, outside is h times x, so when you put it together, that's what gives us the 2xh. Last times last is h times h, which gives us the h squared. When we distribute the 2 onto the x and the h, that gives us the 2x plus 2h. Now let's go ahead and work out the next step, which is f of x plus h minus f of x. That's the whole top of that fraction. We've got the piece that we just wrote out before above. And we've now got f of x right here. So this piece 
is the f of x plus h part, which we've simplified above. This piece is the f of x part. So we'll put in the piece that we simplified down here. We'll distribute the minus on the x squared and the minus on the 2x. So we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus x squared minus 2x. Notice that we've got some things that are going to go ahead and cancel out. We'll go ahead and do that. And what we're left with is the 2xh plus h squared plus 2h. So the entire top of the fraction in that definition simplifies to just those pieces. So let's take our definition and put that in place of that top part. We get the limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh plus h squared plus 2h divided by h and notice that there's an h in all of those pieces above. If we factor it out, it's going to cancel out. Almost every one of these problems, there's going to be some kind of algebra you can do to cancel out those h's. When you do that, now we don't have any problem with taking the limit, so now we can let h approach 0, and only one of these three terms has an h in it. So that term is going to drop out, and what I'm left with is the other two terms, 2x plus 2. They don't drop out because only the h was going to 0, not the x. So the derivative of x squared plus 2x is 2x plus 2. The steps we just went through, they're summarized down here below. If you need to find the derivative, f prime of x for a function y equals f of x, the first thing you need to do is figure out what f of x plus h is. Then find and simplify what f of x plus h minus f of x is. Put it into your quotient. Divide by h, doing some algebra. And then let h approach 0 in that simplified form. And hopefully, a bunch of things will drop out and you'll have a nice little function there. Let's do another one of these and let's follow those steps. Let's find the derivative of f of x equals 1 over x. First thing we do is we figure out what f of x plus h is. So that means in place of x, we put the quantity x plus h. Step 2, now we're going to form f of x plus h minus f of x. So that's 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. And one of the things we can do here is to go ahead and combine these two fractions together by getting a common denominator with x times x plus h. That means the bottom of the first fraction has to get multiplied by x, which means the same thing on top. And the bottom on the second fraction has to get multiplied by x plus h. That means same thing on top. x times 1 gives me the x you see here. 1 times x plus h gives me x plus h. So now I'm going to combine the two fractions together because they have a common denominator. And when I do that, the top will become x minus the x minus the h. We need to remember to distribute that minus onto both of the terms in the numerator. But why that's so nice is the x's now drop out and what we're left with is minus h divided by the quantity x times x plus h. Now we can go ahead in the next step and divide by h. So we're going to take what we just found and divide it by h. It's like a fraction divided by something else. The way to make this easy is to think of this denominator as being a fraction. And when you divide a fraction by a fraction, that's the same as flipping the bottom and multiplying by it. So we're going to have minus h over the quantity x times x plus h. But instead of dividing by h over 1, we're going to multiply by 1 over h and boom. The h's disappear now. So what we're left with is minus 1 
divided by x times x plus h. Now that we've canceled out those h's like we've done previously, we can go ahead and do the limit. So now I'm going to do the limit as h approaches 0 of minus 1 over x times x plus h. The h piece is going to go away. So we're left with on the bottom x times x, and that's what gives us the x squared. The derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. So if you plug a number inside of here, it's going to tell you the slope of the tangent line on 1 over x.